Do, 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 do. All right, we passed the hour. Why don't we go in and get started? Oh, one last person, so I just noticed them. Simon, are you there? Simon? Oh, no microphone yet. Give him a sec. There you go. Simon, are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Skipping over the AIs. I'm not sure there's anything too exciting there to touch on. Uh, community time. So um, just a reminder, a little bit of time here for people who don't normally join the phone call for basically community members who want to bring up topics or questions or concerns. Um, is there anybody from the community who has an issue that they would like to bring up for discussion? All right. I not hearing. Ask oh. something about um, the MQTT uh, broker or how to work with MQTT with cloud events. So we have an IoT device, and I was just wondering if anybody was on the call knew how we intended to to implement that or make use of it with with an IoT transport. Is anybody doing anything with the MQTT? I know Clemens might be, but he's not on the call, obviously. Anybody have any comments on that one? Kathy, do you, because you're so involved in IoT stuff? Sorry, is it, are you talking to me, Rachel? Yeah, I thought that you might be familiar with, like you might be able to take this since you're doing a lot of um, IoT things. Oh, okay, no, not yet. Um, we, yeah, we have not started that. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm willing to have a have a play with it. I've got an IoT device. So I could start getting some sensor readings and seeing how it how it works with cloud events. I'm just not sure um, how it, the person that wrote the spec intended it to be used. So maybe I'll, I'll ask them in Slack next time. Yeah, or you can ask the question as an issue too if you have a question there. Yeah, it seems like it shouldn't be challenging. MQTT carries a relatively arbitrary bag of bits inside, um, so yeah, I don't think there's nothing there that should get in your way. I wouldn't think it's just the, how they expected it to be implemented. Is that is should the device construct the message in the specific JSON payload or some other? Okay. kind of payload it on the device and then <laughs> and then how do you handle that at the other end? So is your question about how it's represented within MQT or like how one would like construct the network topology? Um, so how how would you go about it end to end? What, what was the vision? Was it to encode JSON over MQTT on the IoT device and then have that brokered into eventually into an API gateway? I'm just trying to get the whole story from sensor reading, potential sensor reading to actually executing a function. Yeah, so we there is a um, MQTT transport binding is the name of the markdown. So that has how it would actually be encoded. Um, I'm assuming you're going to have to have some gateway somewhere to make sure that you have um, that you bridge access from small devices to a trusted backend. Yep. Realistically, a large number of IoT devices are like stupid and old and emit fixed messages that you can't control. So there's like a lot of people who in the IoT space who build bridges of various kind to take what the field produces and turn it into something tractable and, you know, uh, cloud events would be a tractable thing to turn it into. That sounds like a good idea as well. So maybe those go to an MQT broker and then from there it repackages the messages before sending them on. Yeah. yeah, but at that point, it's just middleware, right? It's what? Middleware? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we... Sorry. Go ahead, Alex. So I think um, to some extent, cloud events is like a middleware format. Um, so I could try to format the message in the MQT for, to, uh, transport binding format on the device. Um, or I could try and send it to a broker and then send it on. From there, we expecting that potentially some service would run reading from the MQTT queue, subscribing to that, and then invoking, I guess, invoking the functions. Yes. Um, so Kathy probably has more details on this, but we have also, when worrying about the IoT case, 
um, said that the broker gateway could be the thing that actually does the first uh, conversion of any raw data to a cloud event, and that's considered canonical. That is an allowed thing, allowed behavior. Okay, that's a, a good way of looking at it. That's useful for me. Yeah, I think that that's also the way, you know, usually there's a, like a gateway, yeah, you call it broker or a bridge. Um, there's an on-site gateway that usually does that and then send it to the um, the cloud, which has like an API gateway to decode that and then send it to the uh, service platform. Do you, do you guys think it might be interesting demo for a, a meetup or something like that to see uh, data produced from like a node MCU, a bunch of them going into cloud events, triggering functions in the cloud? I would be hugely interested in that. Yeah, I have it too. Okay. Yeah, I think it would be great. Cool. All right. Let me have a think about that. I mean, feel free to reach out to me on Slack as well. I think that could be quite an interesting demo. Did we make any progress with thinking about the RSS feed and how we were going to sort of do our next demo? So, uh, Os, Dan, I think you took an AI to start gathering thoughts around the next demo, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, right? That is correct. I put an issue in GitHub, which I confess I, I haven't looked at for a little while, uh, just throwing out ideas on what the next demo could could be based on. Um, there's a whole bunch of suggestions in there. I'm not sure if anyone's responded yet. And just so you know, I did get a, a student to put up a, uh, a Twitter-like web page so that we could technically continue with the, uh, the Twitter-like thing. Um, if people want to leverage that going forward, I'm showing it here on the screen. That looks interesting. Yeah. So is this reading RSS? No, no, it, it just takes uh, posts, HTTP posts from, um, from whatever functions want to post to it, similar to what Twitter did, right? Okay, so you, you've made an API on the public internet and we can call this with our images? Yep, basically. Yeah, but whatever, you know, whatever, whatever text you want up top and then the image itself, yeah. So it looks yeah, almost exactly yeah. like what we've had before. This looks interesting. I'd like more details. Yeah, I'll, I was going to talk about that when we got around to talking about the uh, demos and stuff. It's just not on the agenda for today, but obviously we can talk about it if we have time. Yeah. Okay, Alex, uh, back to your MQ, MQTT thing. Uh, any other comments, questions on that? It sounds like you were going to do some investigation, right? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll start trying to see how hard it is to build the message in the device, um, what, how much of the transport is defined, or whether it's better to just let it go to a broker that then does a transformation into okay. maybe HTTP JSON or something like that. All right, cool. Sounds good. All right, next on the agenda is logo stuff. And Austin, I see you've been rather busy. Let me start back at the top here. You want to talk to where we are on this one? Sure. Uh, you kind folks gave me two weeks to throw out a few other logo suggestions. Um, I added uh, a couple to this GitHub issue, as well as another gentleman who came up with a kind of a clever idea around a balloon. So I also took that and did a few a few riffs on the balloon concept. So in there, there's really there are really only two concepts. There's our or there's our icon as uh, the icon that we are currently that we currently have with an updated font. Um, to look a little bit more modern. Those are near the top. And then there's another concept with a balloon that was inspired by um, Christoph. And um, yeah, so there's a few things in there. Each one is posted as a separate comment in that thread. Maybe if we like them, we could just give them a thumbs up and figure out kind of what's what people are most excited about. Do you want to require people to only vote on one? You want people to be able to vote on more than one? How would you like to work this little voting mechanism? It's totally up to you. Hmm. <laughs> I like I like the thing that occurs to me is that it might not it might be too simplistic to just vote because there's a lot of overlap between these. Could so if we have like a three second conversation about like I really like this font and I really dislike the balloon or whatever it is, then could we like get to one really quickly? We could certainly try. <laughs> Having a conversation about design aesthetics. Um, I know. Yeah, this will go well. 
this, this isn't going to rattle at all, I'm sure. <laughs> But I, I think we should. I think we should at least take a few minutes to discuss it. See if there's anything that's interesting here, or you know, I, I, there could be some good points that I totally overlooked. Um, so maybe, yeah, if, if we want to time box it and just chat about it real quick, uh, I'm totally open to that. Okay. The new what, font, I would say the new font looks great. Which one has a new font? Um, this one. They they all do. They're all using they all the same font. Oh, okay. Uh, my. <laughs> Except for this one, which is the current one. <laughs> right. Okay. My only nit um, is I slightly prefer things that don't separate cloud and events when we went through the work to say that they are, it's one word. That is an excellent point. I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah, good point. So that's, if we follow that pattern, kick us off that first one. If you look at the original cloud logo, you kind of, kind of squint and you see three balloons clustered. Wait, you talk about this one? Yeah. Are you saying that is a good or a bad thing, Scott? I mean, it's in the it'd be interesting to mock that out and see what it looks like. The C does get quite uh, melded into the whole thing. The E is really obvious. I can see that very clearly. But looking at it with new eyes, this the C is a little, it blends in. So the same thing is true here, I believe. Do you have an idea on how to fix that? It, would it be just like moving it to the left a little so you could make the C go sharper at the end or? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about something like that because I do really like the design or perhaps even adding a little bit more of a gap, breaking the E from the rest of the cloud like the C is broken um, or tinting the C a little bit so you can see it's a letter. That is a very smart uh, design, very flowing. Uh, I do think right my there. preference is more towards the cloud than the balloon. So keeping this yeah. general format? Yeah. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. I don't, <laughs> I actually don't care. I think the current, the current one is just <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's nice we just have we've got an opportunity to make a tweak maybe make the ce of the cloud look slightly more defined yes i i played with that a bit actually i tried to make it a different color make the e the same color and then use a gradient to kind of fade it into the rest of the cloud icon it, yeah, it i couldn't really nail it um so i i dropped that uh, but i could certainly do another take where i just add in some more spacing around the sea? Yeah, I think it would be interesting to see. I mean, I, I'm certainly um, not a graphic designer myself, so I appreciate your, your skills on that. So I think what I've heard so far is people don't want to separate the words, uh, possibly move the C out a little. People are okay with a new font. Anything else? And maybe the only other thing is um, that, that Tagline is maybe not have it double space, maybe bring it up by half the space in terms of the. So this gap right here bothers you? Yeah, maybe. And just, you know. Well, so here's a question. When we print out stickers, do we print out the tagline or just the cloud events and the logo? It wouldn't work well on a sticker with a tagline. I'm not sure I've seen many brands do that. Yeah, because right now the stickers we have show just these two things right here. They don't show the tagline. I, yeah. I think we could have a full-on discussion about what a tagline should be. So maybe we should focus agree. On, on the logo itself. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there needs to be probably a variation. And then we had a discussion a bit a couple of calls ago about the T-shirt idea. And I think this this middle bit would go really well on, on a T-shirt. Um, maybe with the text on the back. So if we were able to split the graphics up into a few different assets, and we finally decide what we what we need, that could help people that go on to make that kind of merchandise. Okay, so Colin, um, Austin, I think you've heard a couple of things about changing this stuff here a little. You want to take another swag at it? And come yes. back with something? Yeah, I could separate the C. Um, I'll remove the I'll remove the tagline. 
At some point, I think we should have a conversation about that tagline too, just to figure out what, what we think is best. But that's a whole other exercise. Yep. Um, in the meantime, I'll, I'll iterate on this. I noticed that one of the balloon graphics got some thumbs up. Um, so anyway, yeah. maybe, I'll, yeah. maybe I'll just take another shot at the revising the existing icon and we could chat about it again during the next meeting. Sounds exciting to me. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Uh, hold on a minute. Let's go back. All right. Thank you. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Moving on. Austin, is there anything you want to bring up on the SDK work? Anything new happened since last time? I don't think you had a meeting. Nope. We haven't had a meeting. I'm going to send out something probably today. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge with the holiday this week. Uh, so I'll send that out today and we'll coordinate something for next week before, uh, before next Thursday. So when you say something, you mean a doodle poll or a summary note or what? Or you Correct. Uh, a summary note as well as the doodle poll. Got it. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Kathy, is there anything you'd like to mention about the workflow meeting that we had on Tuesday? Oh, okay. So we had uh, um, a good discussion on the workflow and also on the um, the Google Doc that I drafted. Uh, I think uh, we discussed, uh, um, so what's the goal of the spec? Um, also, um, we, also the scope of functionalities and uh, and also the what what are the approaches to um for um what are the approaches for specify the uh, specifying the workflow um we i think we are going to uh we decide we are going to add use cases a section of use cases to um help better understand the scope of functionality and and uh, and also like you know um maybe to see what's missing there. And we also, um, we're also going to have people present existing um, ways of doing um, the workflow um, from different um, companies. Um, so we're going to, so the meeting is every Tuesday, uh, if you're interested, you know, you're welcome to join. Um, um, that's pretty much about it, um, yeah. All right. Any questions for Kathy? Yeah, a quick one. This is Leah. Kathy, I, I get I missed it actually. Is this a um, a subgroup of of uh, the serverless working group, or or just a separate iteration on the topic of workflow? Um, it is a subgroup of the serverless work group. Um, but I think it's a little bit. Uh, um, independent of the cloud events, although it's related. Mm -hmm. So it's every Tuesday um, weekly, but I'm not planning that we're going to, you know, drag that meet that weekly meetings for a long time. I think, you know, um, once we have a good understanding of the use cases and the scope of functionality, and then we draft the uh, specification, uh, I think we're going to come back to uh, this work group. Uh, I'm thinking we probably post, propose it and put into some GitHub and then the whole work group, uh, service work group can review that. And then, um, yeah. All right, does that answer your question, Lee? Sounds, sounds good, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. All right, all right, any other questions for Kathy? All right, cool, thank you very much, Kathy. Moving on. Uh, we don't have any issues that need extra special attention as far as I know anyway, unless someone can think of one offhand they'd like to bring up. Okay. In that case, let's get on to PRs. So last time people asked for another week to look over the primer, the, the first draft of the primer. Um, I haven't seen any comments added since last week's phone call. I did add... Uh, 
uh, who was it, Asera, she added a, a PR a while ago about a, a quote starter doc. And I realized that that kind of overlaps with the primer stuff that I did here. So uh, late last week, um, I added uh, some of the text from her PR into here because I th thought it would be good to try to merge the two. Uh, so hopefully if people, if people like this general direction, they'll close off that PR as well. But other than that, there haven't been any changes to it since last week. Um, are there any questions or comments about this? As I said the last time, for the most part, this is just moving text around more than anything else. Okay, are there any concerns? I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, this is Rachel. Last time we looked at this, there was a, like one of the use cases was missing or all the use cases that were there before in this now? No, they were there. It's just like, I was, I was scrolling too fast. Uh, it, here, there you go. It shows up. It just doesn't show up automatically without clicking the diff. Okay. Got it. And I, yeah, they were there. I just, oh, I guess I should point out. Um, I did call them rather than use cases, I call it value proposition because they didn't seem like use cases to me as much as they were trying to explain why cloud events would help in certain cases. If people are bothered by the word or the phrase value proposition, I have no problem switching back to use cases. It just seemed more appropriate to call it this, but it's a minor tweak. I don't care either way, but the text itself is still there. Cool. Yep. All right. Um, the one thing that I was hoping to see that I didn't was, um, not just design like uh, scope non goals, but just things that we've realized are anti patterns, like the embedding of a topic or destination into the event. Uh, is that a separate PR or is that supposed to be just one? Uh, no, uh, this is definitely just a starter PR. I was hoping that people would uh, would notice things exactly like that that are missing. That would be great topics to add that to that. But we do that as follow on PRs. This is just to get something out there for people to start poking holes at. Okay, I'll save it for a future action item then. Okay, great, thank you. But that definitely is a great topic to add, yes. Anything that would, would explain to people who weren't part of the regular calls, you know, why we made the decisions we did, I think that's great stuff to stick into this document to help explain it. All right, any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, is there any objection then to heading this direction and, and adopting the PR? All right. Cool, thank you guys very much. And please, uh, as Thomas was saying there, if you notice things are wrong or missing or you can think of other ideas to add to there, please uh, do follow on PRs. Um, now, Clement is not on the call, but I don't believe his PR has been changed in a while. Um, so in this PR, if I remember correctly, what he was doing was for the most part, adding text down here that basically talked about how extensions don't necessarily have to follow the same pattern that we've laid out for um, how they appear uh, when they're serialized. Uh, that gives basically the out that we talked about at the face-to-face -face meeting. I think that's the bulk of the change. Let me just double check here. Yeah, I think it did suggest some rewording here, but I don't think it actually changed a whole lot other than um, he dropped the X for extensions, and it's just everything's a CE thing now, I believe. Yeah, I think that's the bulk of the changes. Now, there was one comment that was made, I think a couple of days ago. Uh, Z Pencer made a comment about, um, do we need to talk about HTTP headers and what do middleware do with them? You know, do they forward them on? Do they only forward on some and stuff like that? And Clemens came back and talked about how this is really an HTTP thing, and basically HTTP says you have to forward everything on. Um, however, he did agree that we should be clear about that in the spec, and I think that would be a good follow-on PR, because I think that's true regardless of whether this PR exists or not. So I think that'd be a good thing to write down in general. So I think we can follow, we could address that in a follow-on pull request. Um, so I was gonna make a note of that if, if we did adopt the PR. But are there any questions or comments on this one? Do people need more time to think about it? Can I have like three more seconds to read through this really sure. quickly? Sure, of course, no problem. To me, that's the key line right there.
Okay, I'm good with this. Okay. Do we Other, oh, go ahead, sorry. Often see, hi, Doug. Do we not often see X also used as a prefix for custom headers? Just, should this be XCE rather than CE? So there was a big discussion about um, how HTTP has dropped the use of X in their headers recently. Or I don't remember. They, they discourage it. It's still yeah. allowed. It, oh, obviously it's allowed, yeah, but it is, but it is discouraged. Um, I can remember the uh, RFC or IF, I, IETF, whatever it is, uh, paper on, on it that I think it was Mark Nottingham wrote. Um, but I think that's the reason that, um, that Clemens dropped the X was because HTTP was pretty much dropping it as well. But, uh, but, this line, but the sentence right here basically allows an extension to add it if they really wanted to. Any other questions, comments? So the examples are things like event time, event ID, and um, was it Thomas that said that we, must, we mustn't put topics within the cloud event, but is this somewhere where it could be in this extension? Oh yeah, I mean, obviously people are allowed to define their own extension. If they wanted to define a topic extension, they're, they're free to do so, yes. All right, any other questions? All right, is there any ob objection to adopting this? Uh, as a question on the last comment, not on this PR, um, how, why would one use an HTTP extension for a topic and how does that destination differ from the actual HTTP path at which you're posting the message? I assume that question is more directed at Alex. Yeah, just trying to understand. Yeah. Sorry, can you repeat that, Thomas? Uh, so there already is a destination in HTTP spec. It's the, the path component of the HTTP post. Um, so I'm curious where that would differ from the actual, or like w why a topic extension uh, and how you reconcile it between that destination versus the path destination in the HTTP post. So you're saying, I think, if I'm hearing you right, that if a message is coming from a, use the example again, a Kafka broker that is reading events from a, um, a topic partition, then retransmitting them to an event gateway, that it should send a HTTP path of the, um, the topic that it originated from. I see. So you're using topic as a source information, not as a destination information, which I think is part of the confusion. Um, so like I, I personally have been militant against embedding a topic as the destination, um, just because it means that the event can't be shared or put in another place. Yeah. So I, I was trying to think about this, how I could do it in, in open VAS as a use case and doing it backwards in effect. Um, we know where it came from, but where it's going is abstracted away. Like you say, you can then use that in multiple places. Okay, thank you for the clarification. All right, cool, thank you. Any other questions on this one? Is there any objection to adopting it? All right, done. All right, Klaus, I believe you're on the call. Would you like to talk to your PR? Um, yes, so <clears throat> that was my action item after I presented this issue in um, at the face-to-face um, -face meeting. <laughs> so I was dialed in. Uh, and I think the conclusion at the face-to-face -face meeting was that we can remove the event type version, um, which I did. In addition, I just added a, a sentence um, to the description of the schema URL that um, if um, the schema changes, then also the schema URL should be a new one. So to reflect the new version. Okay. Any questions on this one? All right, any comments, concerns before I ask the question? 
have more references to uh, event type version in other mappings or stuff? I don't see them being updated. So he went through and removed it from the JSON format uh, document. I yeah, think but I think we have it in others, don't we? Uh, do we? I don't know. I did a git clone and then a grab on the event type version. And didn't find anything else, but ah, if sure. you find anything, just let me know. Yeah. Yeah. If we miss one, I'm sure we'll catch it or we'll find it and do another PR. All right. Is there any uh, concern or is there objection to adopting this PR? All right. Cool. You guys are very quiet today. All right, um, well, I want to just take a minute because I had a, I had a couple conversations offline with some people about extensions, <clears throat> obviously related to the next two PRs that we're gonna discuss. And I just wanted to get, uh, or have a brief discussion to see if everybody's on the same page relative to extensions. Um, cause I'm not sure everybody is. And I wanna make sure we all have a common understanding because if we don't have the common understanding then I think we're gonna to continue to go around in circles for a while. Um, and so I'd like to just take five minutes to briefly talk about them, if that's okay. Um, the first is I wanted to make sure that people understand that when we talk about what is an extension, uh, in, in my own words, basically, an extension is anything that is not specified in our spec.md file. Okay, if it's not in that specification, or, or I guess I should say, if it's not specified in one of our formal specifications, like spec.md, then it, is a, then it is an extension. So for example, the extensions.md file that we have, obviously those define extensions. But if a vendor, like say IBM, decides to add a particular attribute someplace inside the cloud event, that is also an extension. It's a vendor extension, but nevertheless, it is still just an extension. So anything that is not defined and agreed to by our working group as part of our formal specs is an extension. Is that is consistent with everybody else's view? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Just want to make sure. Now the second point is location does not matter. And by that I mean if you look at this example here on the screen, right, you have a chunk of JSON and you have two chunks of, of we have two properties here in red, is apartment and is married. Now in the past, or sorry, in our, in our spec, we talk about extensions. We have a, you know, a bag as of right now called extensions. So I think there was, might have been some confusion about, well, what if things appear other places, like for example, outside that bag? And I wanna point out here that, again, if it's not specified as part of our spec, it's an extension. And that's true regardless of where it appears. So in this particular chunk of JSON, if the spec defines this schema here, then is apartment and is married are both extensions. In other words, location of the extension does not matter. They are still extensions. Is that consistent with everybody's belief? Like we can make that the case, but it's going to present a problem for strongly typed languages. And so okay. I don't, I don't want to just say like, like we can, we can like, agree that that should be the case, but we need to come up with a solution for how we're going to implement that. Right. This, this doesn't talk about whether we want to allow extensions everywhere. This is just saying if you don't say otherwise, and they are allowed, they are, both of these things are called extensions. It, my, my point here is that there isn't a different word for is apartment versus is married. They are both extensions, is my point. Okay, but they're different extensions. They are totally different extensions. Well, okay, yeah. Okay, that yeah. works. Yeah, they can be different extensions or someone could say, hey, I want to define these, these things to go together. That's out of scope for the discussion, yes. But they are both just extensions. So, so extensions can have scope, right? You, yes, you could definitely say, is okay. apartment an, is an extension, and if you use it, it must appear under address. You can definitely specify as part, that as part of the definition of this. That is definitely true, yes. Okay, thank you. Well, can we, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, um, so we need to um, be clear on what what will be in the spec and what will be in the extension. So uh, so if you say like, you know, vendor specific things are in the extension, should we have like a vendor specific um, spec on the uh, vendor's extension, like some extension spec, which is for, you know, 
for vendor to put their extension there. Um, I, I'm, I just don't think you know it's, it's, it's quite right to just put any random things into the you know into the um, the events. You know, anyone just just can put anything there without clearly defining it. Defining it. All right. All right. This is Tim. Um, so um, the point about strong, a strongly typed languages is a good one. And so we've got a thing set kind of like this in AWS, AWS events that uh, come from all the different AWS services, and there's a router and so on. And there's a lot of them. I mean, there's you know there's some huge number of services that emit them now, and the number per second that's flowing through the system is, is absurdly huge. Um, and that's been one of the central problems we've had is we get complaints from customers saying, well, I need a schema so I can just, you know, map it into, into, into my Java object. And that problem has turned out to be really, really hard. And not only have we not solved it, I'm not even convinced there is a good solution because obviously at some point you're going to have a, a data field that actually has the, the source specific payload in, in it. And, um, you know, unless you insist that nobody is allowed to contribute data unless they provide a, you know, uh, object binding libraries for Java and Go and .NET and, and so on, you're kind of stuck. And so I, I'm just I'm not saying that's not a, not a good idea. I'm just saying it, it's, it's a really hard problem. One thing we did is so for the top level wrapper fields, like we're really super fascist. There's only like six and they all have to be there always. And no, you can't ever put anything else in there. And, and so on and so forth. So at least we've banished the, the irregularity and service specific stuff down to subsidiary elements. Um, I'm not saying that, that approach is, is optimal or that whether one that, that, that you know, cloud event should take. It's just some, some of our, our lessons. Yeah, again, I just wanna point out that for the purpose of this discussion, I was ignoring the possibility of, of the specification of say this schema banning extensions in certain spaces. I, my point here was just to point out that both is apartment and is married, assuming they are allowed per the definition of the schema, that these are both called extensions. And, okay, so, so I have a follow-up question. Um, mm -hmm. So IBM wants to include these extensions. Is it, are, like, is it still compatible if another person supporting cloud events does not support those extensions? Yes, because extensions, unless otherwise specified, should basically be optional for a receiver to understand. Okay. Uh, uh, so I think my question is, you know, if we can just put any random, you know, key value pairs in some random in any place, so how should the, I mean, the, the could, I think they could cause quite some issues, right? Because oh, so, so example, you put its apartment. I, I can put concur it with what Captain is saying. There mm -hmm. is a, there is cause for confusion happening, isn't there? So let, let, me, let me make sure we're focused on just what the one aspect, right? Keep in mind, I'm not focusing on whether we should allow extensions at every spot in the hierarchy. That's not my point here. My point here is just to say that if if the specification allows an extension at is apartment level and it allows it to be where is married appears, then they are both called extensions. Okay, then can we change the subject to be the one, like should this be allowed? Because that seems very, that seems like a very natural question to ask. I, I, I agree. And I, I, I try to remember if I actually get to that. Um, I, think, I think that's gonna lead into the next PR discussion. My bigger point here was just to make sure that people don't think of extensions that we define are somehow different than vendor extensions. They're all extensions. And in particular, whether extensions appear at the top level or whether they appear inside of a bag, as long as they're both allowed, they're both still just extensions. That's all I was trying to get to. The, the gotcha though, so I mean, in formal logic, Yes, the, in anything that follows an if statement where the condition is false is true. However, uh, I don't think anyone has proposed that there's more than one place in a rendering to have an extension. So it's really hard for us to follow because I can't call this an extension because I don't, all I see this is as non-conforming data. And I think that uh, yeah, I, I did this. The, the idea that I disagree with the premise that uh, that a cloud events are JSON. Cloud events have a, have a JSON representation. Um, and B, I disagree with the idea that 
just because we allow extensions that we don't understand means that we allow them anywhere in any representation. I agree. As I said, this isn't getting into whether we want to allow them everywhere. This is just based upon the conversations I've had and the, 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 the terminology that I've heard people use. People were putting extensions into different categories of extensions. And, and in my mind, we need clarity on whether that's something we want to propagate going forward. Because in my mind, an extension is an extension is an extension. As long as it's allowed to appear there, I don't care who created it or where it appears, it is an extension. And it's not I, something else. We did I have some discussion about like... you caring or, or some of us caring where it appears. And that was because we were just looking at the headers, weren't we? Let's talk about where it appears in a minute. Okay. The other thing is Rachel has a comment here that I don't know if anyone's spoken about yet, about how we would cover this in a strongly typed language. Yeah, I, I, I made that comment after um, I brought it up in conversation and then uh, I don't remember, was it Tim? Tim also has this problem. I'm not sure, like, I know, Doug, that you want to isolate the conversation to what do we call this? but I think a lot of our minds are jumping to the implementation problems that we see with And this. that's fine. And all, all I'm asking <laughs> is patience. We will get to that. <laughs> I just want to make sure that, that there isn't a different word that people want to use, right? Vendor extension is no different than extension. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay. Can we move on to the part yes. that I think we're all jumping to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, okay. Let me think Where are we with that um, extension versus vendor extension? Because I could imagine not everyone producing cloud events will be a vendor. I, to me, the word vendor should be dropped from our vocabulary when you talk about extensions. They are all just extensions. Yeah. I, I think I agree with you on that. Okay. I think, you know, um, I would like to second what Thomas just said. I, I think, you know, um, it sh we should not, you know, allow, like, it will be confusing, you know, um, for the receiver. If, you know, anyone, any of the producer can just put any string in any place. Okay, Kathy, let's hold off on that. We'll get there in a minute. We'll get to, hey, lo we'll get to location hey, in a sec. <laughs> hey, Doug, I think yes, you're sir. getting such engagement on this issue because you've done such a fantastic job of finally laying out what an extension is. So I hope that this makes it into our GitHub at some point because it's, uh, it's a very good explanation. Well, I, I, I do think that when we finally get all, we all get agreement on extensions, where they can be and stuff like that, then yes, I think this information should go into the primer someplace so other people can understand our thought process. Agreed. Yep. Or extensions on MD. Or extensions on MD, yep, or in there, yep. Someplace, basically, yes. Okay, so one last point before we jump to what everybody wants to talk about, which is where do you want to allow them? Um, for the moment, give me some latitude, please. <laughs> And let's say our specification does allow send SMS as a property at the top level in our JSON rendering. Just give me that for a minute. We may not allow it, I understand, but for the moment, let's assume we do. My point in this part of the discussion is to point out that if we allow extensions here and we allow extensions in what we currently have in the spec, which is a bag called extensions, these are both extensions. And technically, there's no difference between the two. Does that jive with everybody else's understanding? Well, one huge difference could be that it's expected that every value inside of the extensions bag gets forwarded and everything else gets dropped. I suppose you, if you were to add language to the spec that said that, I suppose that could be true. But barring we're, someone going out of the way to say that, I'm not sure that would be true. No, I think, I think it's right because... Um, if I don't have to support, if I don't have to support all extensions, then I might treat different, like I assume that it would be the case that I would drop the extensions I don't support and I would just pass through the extensions bag. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I agree with that too, yeah. But wait, yeah. Pa wait, pass through the extensions bag or pass through the extensions you know about? There's two, di there's two very different things. I, I would, I'm suggesting, like, this is my intuition, and we can talk about whether or not this is anyone else's intuition. Uh, so say you have, so you are supporting a new extension that includes send SMS as a top level key and value. I'm not supporting that extension. I've never heard of it before. So when I get the event, I drop that, but I want to be as compliant as possible. So everything that's in the extensions 
but like underneath extensions, I will just pass through. So let me ask you about that. If the specification makes it perfectly clear that people can add top level things and they can add extensions under here, why would you choose to only forward one and not the other? Because I have no idea what that extension is. I've never heard of that. But you've never heard of enable logging either. But I know that that is going to be like this. This is the point about strongly typed languages. I know that that's going to be um, a, like a, a key value pair like bag. And so I know what to do with that. And I don't know what to do with any random other piece of data that you send me. So I, like, that's the problem. I, so I disagree with that because as of right now, extensions is basically just a bag. It's a key with an object that yes. is no different than this. It's quite different. Okay, so S send SMS, like right now, it looks like it's Boolean. It could also be a string or it could, it could be anything in the world and I have no idea what that is. And that's, that's the like heart of the matter for me. But I could do that as well, just as easily. So why is it any different? Okay, so for each, so for each thing, so for, um, so for if we just go through each one of these keys and values, uh, so like cloud events version, I know what to expect there. I expect it to be a string. For source, I expect that to be a string. For extensions, I know that's going to be a hash, right? I know that that's going to be, like we've been calling it a property bag, but I have a clear way of what to do with that thing when I get it. Send SMS, I have no idea what to do with that when I get it. I don't know what this is. You're going, you're asking me to, take a strongly typed language and make it and make it a, like a not typed language. And that's going to be a huge implementation problem for me. I elaborate. When you said send them, when you said you don't know what to do with send SMS, which so the bottom, SMS? the bottom top level property, the second send SMS, I don't know what kind of thing that is. And it's going to be hard for me to deal with. Why is that any different than the first one? Because the first one I'm going to, well, it is kind of still a problem, but I'm just going to make everything a string. I'm going to pass it through. But you can't. Um, so Doc also, Doc also logically group something together. You know, it will be easier for the receiver to decode it or to handle it rather than we just throw thousands of, you know, could be like hundreds of random, you know, um, whatever this send SMS or other things at the top level. That would be, you know, hard for the receiver to yeah. handle how to handle it. Okay, I'm wondering if we have a quorum on on how we're defining the types, because there is an issue open as well. I think is it yours, Doug, that's suggesting everything should be represented as a string? Uh, I'm also uh, wondering yeah. on the other end of that, when you're decoding it into strongly typed language, how you know what it is, and then whether we have to embed a schema to support it too. So I, I'm I'm fascinated by this discussion. Um, and to be honest, it kind of hurts my head a little <laughs> because all the arguments for why this bottom send SMS is hard for people should apply to this one. And yet people are saying it doesn't. And that's mind boggling to me. And I don't want to rattle on this on the call here because I'm not sure this is the best place for it. So can people <laughs> add comments about why these two are different into the PR about removing the extensions bag? Can I because I really don't understand that. Can I make a step or you, yeah, you have to treat all of the other uh, properties, top level properties, as untyped as well. So to be able to bind all of this uh, struct. And then uh, uh, just because of the single field or ad additional properties, somebody could provide. So you cannot mm, be type safe with the other stuff. You have to uh, play it safe and use the like open key value uh, map. For everything, yeah, that so makes for, it a little bit difficult. For the implementation, it might be easier having the known fields at the top level. When it comes to thinking about a language like Go, for instance, and then having this part unmarshaled conditionally if you're interested in it, rather than having that that data all mangled together. Yeah, because in Go, you can definitely do this without any problem. I've done it myself. That's why I'm. Really, kind of confused. It's not the question whether you can do it. Uh, it's uh, how Usability. trivial that is, uh, and that's not trivial, uh, yeah. especially to do it in type safe way. Yeah. Okay. And there's a performance impact as well when you start. I, I I believe. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. When you start to get into the and it's not just go interface in any... of interfaces or in .NET using dynamic and things like that. Okay, so can I get you guys to add comments about that to the, the, the pull request about removing 
um, the extensions bag because I think it'd be useful to have that discussion in there. And I, like I said, I don't want to rattle on this on this call right now because I don't think it's the best use of time. Yeah, I, I would like to just add one more comment. So for the extension, right? I, I'm not. Uh, I'm just thinking. Why do we just have uh, a generic names extension? I think it would be better to have multiple different categories of extension, right? So that you can, we can have uh, either a type it, so for one type of extension, you know, we can say, uh, we can give it whatever the name, right? So we know what kind of type if we want to use it, or we can just skip it, right? Um, instead of so everything into so, so one Kathy, mm -hmm. your suggestion would be instead of having top level, um, like, does that, does that, end up becoming something analogous to this where instead of like send SMS that like at the bottom that key would become something like um, uh, this like IBM dash uh, SMS extension like something like that and then that can be a property bag of whatever it wants yeah something like that IBM extension or like you know Google extension something like that or some other meaningful extension of people knows how to use it and also it's kind of it's better to be defined so that of course vendor specific right you do not need to find the it's already a self-explanatory what's the other mm -hmm. what's the difference between that and putting ibm under extensions or just saying ibm dash send sms and get rid of it well doug you still don't understand the hydration problem the hydrate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me ignore that <laughs> top level thing there. Let's do this. How's that? Right, but that's that's easy for one key. But now make extensions have an IBM bag. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that would be better. You know, the I believe that's what Kathy was saying. Put IBM extensions under extensions. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I don't necessarily like the word IBM here because one of the reasons for extensions is like something that you expect a broader platform. Like, you know, if you look at our examples, um, we have things for tracing, for uh, sampling, for uh, we've talked yeah. about adding JAW authentication claims. These are things that we, ex like, we expect IBM or Google or Huawei, wh whoever will pioneer, but they're explicitly, at least for the known extensions, are doing it because they expect others to do it. I agree, and that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to remove the extensions, I think, itself for the exact same reason that people wanted to drop the dash X on HTTP headers, because the minute, say, send SMS becomes a valid thing we want to put as part of our spec, if it's under this bag, everybody's going to have to change their code to support it in two different places, at least for a period of time. So, remember, cloud events is not JSON, so everything you're saying does not apply to Proto. I, I understand, but, I, but my point is... So we can, we can smooth some curves. We cannot pretend that we can ever avoid them. Agreed. I'm not, I agree. I, I, this is, uh, I, I am of the belief that our spec, as I think Clemens first pointed out, is more of an info set spec. And then we all have different serializations for different things like proto versus JSON. And they may look radically different, have very different ways of dealing with things like extensions. Yeah, so and so the, the, that. It has no extensions. It just says that you can have extensions. Yeah. There is no extensions bag anymore, I thought. And well, then we, you're yeah. talking about the rendering in various languages. Yeah, well, as of right now, I think we do have an extensions thing in our, in our info set, the, I think. I got to go the, back. The thing I worry the most about the, with the, all of these extension talks is people starting to put the, the event data into the header, which is against what we're actually trying to accomplish with cloud events. I totally agree with that. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was going to yeah. get to that discussion at some point too, yes. <laughs> yeah. One more point here. If we do have the blast send SMS true as a top level property, and then cloud event 3.5, 3 whatever, adds the send SMS property as a top level official property and not an extension, it's going to be how for promoting this or with backwards compatibility. As in, I had an extension which added the uh, uh, send SMS field as a Boolean, and now Cloud Events is defining send SMS uh, field as an official field, and it's a string, or it's the phone number, or something like that. At least if they're all in the extensions bag, yes, we might have to support two, but I won't get much 
a, a new version of cloud events conflicting with an extension already implemented. Right. Okay, so we're almost out of time. Tell you what, I, I think this is a worthy discussion and what I'd like to do is send out a note asking uh, for people to, who, who are interested in this to talk offline about this, because I don't think this is the best phone call for, or the best venue to discuss this. So I'd like to send out a doodle poll to see who's interested in talking about this in an offline discussion. Is that okay with people? That way we can continue yeah. there and we can come back with a proposal. Can I, can I make one request additionally? Can we yeah. write down somewhere what we, like the formats that we intend to support? Because I know from talking with people that we, at one point we said we wanted to, we want this to be implementable in, for example, Proto and JSON. But I'm looking through the spec now and I don't see anywhere where that's written down as like one of our goals. Like, is there, so like that would be really helpful to inform these kind of conversations, I think. Yeah, I think we've been kind of going with the assumption that if someone wants to support a particular protocol or format, then they write a spec for it. And that's the way we say, hey, these are the ones we support because they are, there's actually a spec for it. So I'm, I'm expecting at some point, someone's gonna come along with a proto one. Is that not true, Thomas? <laughs> All right, yeah, we're talking about it in general. There's still some struggles and ironically, extension is one of them. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. It's not for the reasons you expect. It's because um, we can't have something that includes uh, scalers very easily. Okay. And I actually think that discussion, I can't remember who brought it up, the, the issue I raised about should everything be a string may actually play into this in some fashion, right? Because if we decide that's Sorry. easier for everybody, that may make some of this easier going forward. Well, it, it makes it encodable, but it defeats the entire purpose of Proto in that once you have a Proto for it, you have a library for it that is like useful and meaningful. Uh, if you then have to layer on top of the Proto-based library, a semantic parsing library, you might as well not have had Proto to begin with. Understood. Um, but no, the, the big thing that we're struggling with is that Proto can't support a variant. Um, so that, that type of variable in our info set is incompatible with Proto. Duh. Get a real one, will you? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I believe we're basically out of time here. So let me just quickly go back to the, uh, list of attendees. Um, Jurgen, are you on the call? Listen. Oh, what about Ryan? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Louis, are you there? Yep. Eric? Um, yep, you hear me? Okay, Neil, yep. Neil? I think we lost Neil. Uh, Garish? Garish, are you there? Okay, Heinz? I don't know who Heinz is. I don't think we've had them before. And what about Farad? Yeah, I'm online. Is that a Farad or Heinz? Farad. No, Farad. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, this is uh, Heinz. I'm uh, Heinz Schaffner. I'm uh, going to start to try and join these calls. I'm uh, calling from uh, Solar Systems. Okay, great. Do me a favor. Can you go to our agenda doc and make sure I spell your last name right and put your company name in there so I can get you on the attendance roll? Absolutely. Thank you very much. And Garish, are you there? Or Neil? Okay, is there anybody I missed? Okay, and just to finish out the last discussion, we're over time, but I will send out a doodle poll, assuming everybody's okay with that, to try to get some offline discussions going. Send it on the email or in Slack or I will send. I will send that email to the cloud events mailing list. Okay, thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Guys without, well, yes. We're going to have another, another meet, offline meeting. Oh, yeah, we've got to have lots of offline meetings. We already meetings. have, you know, the work group and, the, and cloud event. Now we have another one. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I'm, if, if no one shows up, then we can talk about it on this one. It's, it's, a, you know, it's really up to you guys. I just thought we, we didn't want to necessarily have a deep dive on this particular call. This one's more for a resolving pull request. Yeah, I think probably, you know, um, yeah, of course we can have offline call, but, you know, post the comments on, the, on that, um, what's that, that PR. Yes. Another way, yeah. Yes, that's definitely the preferred And recording way. for all the calls, please. I couldn't attend the last three or four meetings and it was rather hard to find the recording. Yeah, when I talk to those guys who manage the recordings, I'll try to make sure that they, they pick up all the, uh, the non-regular ones as well. That would be perfect, thank you. All right, cool. Thank you guys very much and I apologize for running late, but it was a good discussion, thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.